Hi everyone and happy International Day of the Girl. I'm Matty and I'm an editor at Stripes Publishing. I'm lucky enough to work with lots of authors to make books for readers aged 5 to 18 and I'm here with some of my colleagues and one of my incredible authors to talk to you about the life of a book. At a basic level, books are words on a page, sometimes with pictures, but they're so much more than that. They can take us all over the world and to worlds we didn't even know existed and they open our eyes to new ways of thinking and to other people's lives. Everyone has a story to tell. But how do these stories turn from an idea in an author's mind to the beautiful books we can hold in our hands? There are lots of people involved in making books and bringing stories to life. I'm going to introduce you to a few of these people and show you the journey of a book. In this case, we're going to use Agent Zyber Investigates, which is a series about a young detective who's desperate for a crime to solve. Books come about in different ways, but generally they start their lives in an author's mind. Something sparks an idea Characters plot leap onto the page, although usually it takes quite a lot of thinking and writing and rewriting. Being an author takes a lot of work. But once the story is on a page, these authors, often with the help of an agent, who is someone who represents them and helps them find the right publisher for their book, will send the manuscript to editors. And that's where I come in. As an editor, I read these stories and choose ones which I think readers will love. When I find a story that I think is particularly special, I make an offer to the agent and keep everything crossed that the author and agent want to work with me. If they say yes, then we as the publisher have the rights to publish and sell the book. But before we get to the selling stage, before we even have a book, there's the editing. We have to work on the text. There are lots of different stages of editing and it varies from book to book. But editors get to work with authors on the plot, the characters, the structure, the language. There's a lot to think about. I love working in editorial because it's a very creative role and it feels a real privilege for an author to trust me with their work. And it's a really collaborative process with lots of back and forth. Hi, I'm Annabelle Sami and I'm an author. Um, I write children's books, so I've written a series called Agent Cyber Investigates. And this is the first one, Agent Cyber Investigates the Missing Diamonds. Um, and then we've got a second one in the series, Agent Cyber Investigates the Poison Plot. So Zyba wants to be a secret agent and she uh, finds a different mystery to solve in each book. Um, and they're often things that are happening around her in her hometown. She has her best friend, uh, Poppy, who helps her and also her little brother, Ali. Oh, and then I also have another children's book series called Llama Out Loud. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, and they're all great. <laughs> and what we're going to do today is so when we once we have the text once Annabelle's written our story we have a look at some edits and work out how it's going to work overall so there's lots of different things we look at for example we look at the characters so obviously we have Agent Zyber our main character so how did you come up with Zyber what sort of elements went into her character uh, so Zyba is very confident. She's a natural leader um, and I wanted to make sure that even though she is very confident and she's very forward thinking, she's also a team player and she really cares about her friends. Um, so I wanted to make sure that Zyba is a good role model for the readers, um, but also that they can see elements of themselves in her. So she's not a completely perfect character who gets it right all the time because that wouldn't be fun as a reader if you read someone who was a know-it-all basically <laughs> and always got everything right. Um, so she definitely has elements of me when I was little. I was always trying to nose my way into things and find out things. Um, I always liked to know things that I wasn't meant to know so if, if I felt like someone was hi hiding a secret from me I would make it my business to find out what it was so I think there's definitely elements of me in there but also just elements of children that I've met um, and girls that I've met who I think are really um, yeah like bullshy and um, outgoing so yeah, those are the elements that I tried to get in her character. 
Yeah, yeah, she definitely wants to know what's going on at all times, doesn't she? <laughs> if there's nothing to know, she just has to know. She's, yeah, she's very nosy, but in a good way. <laughs> yeah, no, you feel safe if Cyber's around, you know that everything's okay. Yeah. yeah. And one thing when we were looking at the first book, especially, was uh, her relationships with Ali, her little brother, and Poppy, and sort of making sure that, like you said, she's a team player, but everyone has their own sort of role within it. Um, and that's something that changed. Well, I think Ali was kind of always, Ali's character quite strongly from the beginning was, he had his personality quite set, but I feel like her sort of friendship, especially with her cousin Mariam, her sort of rival, I feel like as we did the first book, the edits, we changed their sort of relationship a bit. Yeah, so I, so this book was, um, started kind of like as a seed of an idea by a, different editor called Karen Ball and she sent me the rough outlines of um, the character descriptions and she told me that I could make the characters my own and add different elements to them and the character description for Ali was that he uh, was like a real joker and he liked playing around he also really liked maths and he kind of um, was like a whiz at maths and could do calculations off the top of his head um and so I thought I kind of wanted to add to his character by giving him making his relationship with Zyba a bit more like um sibling relationships that I've seen where um the younger sibling does often get put down on a little bit and has to put up with quite a lot um but Ali really is able to stand up for himself and prove himself by the fact that he is really, really clever. And I decided I didn't want him to just be good at maths. I wanted him to be good at everything and just know mm -hmm. loads and loads of facts about loads of things and have an insatiable curiosity, curiosity for um, basically everything. So he's a walking encyclopedia. Um, so you definitely get like you definitely build characters as you go and and you know an important part of story making is that characters change uh, depending on the things that happen to them in the story so they're always going to be slightly different by the end of the book um anyway and will have discovered new things about themselves based on the challenges that they face in the book so Ali at the beginning of book one is um, has a lot of phobias and is really scared of um, like spiders and heights and small small places um, but actually because he's challenged uh, throughout the book by having to go into small spaces and having to face spiders and has cyber support and love by the end of the book he's a lot braver and in book two he isn't as scared anymore he still has like he's like he really doesn't like spiders still mm. um and neither do i which is why i put it uh yeah but he's definitely um less less afraid in book two than he was in book one yeah he sort of comes into his own doesn't he and he sort of gets while well, he always sort of teases zyber i think he gets more confident sort of in a bigger yeah. in a bigger group which is really great yeah and so obviously yeah. we have our our heroes and then we have the criminals and that's been something that's been really fun is working on the crime and actually plotting that out and trying to make sure that that all works and how have you found sort of you know so we have to make sure that all the characters have their motivations and it takes quite a lot doesn't it with the sort of the red herrings and making sure that you know it's not too obvious but that it all makes sense um and that's definitely something I think that because I've not really worked on much detective stuff before so it's been quite a an interesting process plotting plotting these crimes yeah i also haven't worked on a mystery story this was the first detective story that i've written um but i've watched a lot of mystery tv and films and listened to a lot of mystery podcasts and even though it's a different uh, medium to books the plotting is the same and you can apply the structure um, that you've watched in like a mystery film to the structure of a book because mm -hmm. you will always have 
Well, I always say this, I say this over and over again, it's probably boring, but I think working backwards actually works quite well. So um, you have the reveal of the crime at the end and how they did it. And then you work backwards to plot those clues um, throughout the story so that they're just seeded through and they build up to the end. Um, yeah, so, and that's where the red herrings comes in, come in. And um, so when you're plotting those clues, you plot in the misleading clues as well alongside them. Um, and it's like a little breadcrumb trail to the end. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, um, it's getting sometimes, you know, when you start writing, you sort of see more opportunities for different, you know, getting in different red herrings or getting in different things. And I think one thing I remember discussing, I think it was actually in book two, was that actually quite a lot of the way Zyber was solving the clues were quite similar. Like a lot of it was sort of her overhearing stuff or like sort of coincidentally spotting things. So that was something that we sort of looked at in book two, wasn't it? To make sure that how she was discovered, how she was detecting wasn't just luck and was sort of a bit more yeah a bit more to it and that was yeah that was really interesting and again it's a lot of it you can't really see it you know while we work on the outline you don't really see it until you get the full manuscript <laughs> and then you can start delving in um yeah yeah so obviously we have all you know like the big picture stuff like the characters and the plot and then actually it's once you've got the text it's looking at the sort of i remember looking at timings for example in book one of the different mm -hmm. events that they went to and making sure you know that if it's is all these little things like if it's dark then the fairy lights you know how will they see and are the fairy lights on and that kind of stuff yeah um, that sort of all comes comes into yeah play. i find timing really difficult um because i think as an author you have ideas of what the scene will look like in your head so i yeah it was the particular scene where they go into a maze like a hedge maze in the garden yeah. And I was like, oh, atmosphere, it's dark, like the stars are out, they're in the maze. But um, practically then, of course, you flagged up, well, if it's dark and they're in a maze, how can they see what's going on in such detail? So it is really useful to have someone, um, an editor, looking at your manuscript as a whole because they don't see what's in your head. So <laughs> when I'm writing, um, I'm like, you know I, I can see what's in my head but I haven't relayed all of that onto the page and the editor then will look at the page and be like okay let me try and work out what's going on <laughs> <laughs> so that we can get it on the page it's like a yeah <laughs> that's such a good way of putting it isn't it yeah because <laughs> you have all the discussions so you kind of get the you know you get the gist of what everyone's aiming for but obviously you can't you know, as an author, well, as a reader, you when you read on the page, you visualise it in your own way, but that's come from, mm. yeah. Ah, oh, mm. well, great. Thank you. So, after lots of conversations like that, where we look at all different levels of the stories, so as you can see, sometimes it's big picture edits, like who's the criminal and why do they do it? And sometimes it's much smaller, like how old is a character or specific timings. We reach a stage where both the author and the editor are happy with the text. Once that happens, it goes off to the designer to work their magic and make it look like a book. Hi, I'm Sophie and I'm a book designer. The process of designing a book all starts with finding an illustrator. There are several factors that play into how we narrow down the search for an illustrator, including the age range of the book and the art style. So we might be looking for something more cartoony or traditional or magical or modern, etc. And so once I found a few I really like, I'll share them with the team and I'll usually ask the illustrators for a sample, which is where I give them information about how the main character should look and sometimes a specific scene for them to illustrate and they come back with the drawing. So once we have all of these in, we'll see whose style we works best for that particular book and whose interpretation of the character we really like. Now that we have our illustrator, I can start working with them on the design of the book. I'll often start working on the cover before I've received the final text, so I'll have a chat with the editor about details like what the characters should look like, and where the book is set, if there are any key scenes that might work really well for a cover, and we'll come up with some ideas. I'll write up a brief for the illustrator instructing them on what to draw for the cover, 
and maybe even include a mock-up or a sketch and tell them what kind of feel we want the cover to have. So it could be mysterious or action-packed or magical or happy, anything like that. And they then come back with a rough sketch or sketches, depending on how many options we had. And these are still black and white at this stage. I then share this with the editor and also people in sales and marketing to see what changes need to be made before going to final. This can sometimes go through a few stages until it's ready to be coloured up to make sure it's right. Feedback then goes to the illustrator and they come back with coloured cover art. And this gets shared around again and any final tweaks are made. I'll also present a few options for the branding of the cover, which is the fonts that are used for the title and choose one for the series. Other elements to be decided on for the cover are what finishes it should have, and these are special effects like metallic foil or embossing where part of the cover is raised up. For the insides, once I receive the text, I put it into a program called InDesign, and I lay it all up, I choose the font for the text, and then I'll read through the book, and as I go, I pick out scenes to be illustrated and make space for them on the page. I write descriptions of what the illustrations should be of, and then these go through the same process of getting roughs, giving feedback, and getting final art. Once the art is in, the text is final, and everyone's happy, we have to send it to print. It can be hard to let it go, but fortunately we have a production team who make sure that the next stage goes smoothly. Hi, I'm Kate and I work in production. Production is an often overlooked department of publishing. Without it, our books would not get made or delivered on time. We liaise with designers and editors to determine the final specification of the project and we work with sales and rights to make sure we fulfil ours and our customer orders. We work with printers in the Far East and Europe, negotiating on prices and agreeing print schedules. A uh, good production controller needs to be very organised, calm, have good negotiating skills along with good communication skills and they also have to have the ability to work well with team members. If you are highly organised, don't mind working with numbers and like problem solving, you might like production. You also get to see all the books first, which never gets old. Now the book exists, what do we do with it? Well, we want as many people as possible to enjoy the stories, including readers all over the world. Hi, I'm Elle and I manage the rights for Stripes, which means I get to sell books to publishers all around the world so they can publish them in their own languages. I also work with film, TV and audio companies too, which is really exciting. To work in rights, you need to love working with people as you get to work with people from all over the globe, from America to Germany to China to Australia and everyone in between. So if you love travel and culture and other people, rights could be for you. Hi, my name's George and I'm the sales manager for Little Tiger. That means it's my job to make sure our, jo our books end up in bookshops. In order to do this, the very first thing I do is read all of our wonderful books so I know exactly what they're about um, and I can tell everybody how great they are. And then about four months before the book is due to come out, I go and visit Waterstones and WH Smiths and supermarkets and lots of small independent bookshops and I tell them all about our books that are coming out that month. I will show them the fabulous covers that our designers have come up with, I will tell them all about the plot um, and why the book is so amazing and if the meeting goes well, when the book comes out on publication day you will be able to walk into your local Waterstones or your local bookshop and pick up a copy of Agent Zyber or any of our other books. Sales is a fantastic bit of publishing to work in. It's really varied because you get involved with all of the different departments. But for me, the best things about it are I get to read loads of books and visit loads of bookshops. I get to meet lots of no new people and I get to travel a lot. So if you like those things, when you grow up, sales in publishing might be something for you to consider as a job. Um, now that the book is actually in a bookshop, it's time to pass over to marketing and publicity so they can let everybody else know about the book.
Hello, I'm Charlie and I work in publicity and marketing at Little Tiger Group. Uh, that means that my job is basically to make sure that you know the books are coming so that you know that you can go out and buy them. To do that, I do several different things. Firstly, I talk to people who work in the children's book review industry. So these are people like journalists, uh, magazine reviewers, booksellers, librarians and your teachers. Um, these are the people who are going to be able to help you hear about the book directly. So basically, I pass the word on to them and they pass it on to you. And that means that I do things like send out newsletters or send out communications on social media so that they can hear about it first. It gives them an exclusive and means that you get to be amongst the first to hear about the books. The other things I do is talk to people who are book bloggers and these are specialists who love to talk about books. Uh, they do things like book reviews or videos on YouTube or TikTok and it's really great because it means that they get to share their own content and find creative ways to talk about the books with excitement and hopefully that gets you feeling really enthusiastic about it as well. The other things I've been doing is making sure that they go out to people who are really going to appreciate them. So I've done a lot of searching for people who are also quite like Zyber. Zyber is a British Pakistani protagonist so I've been asking people who they like mystery stories and also share her background. This year has been really great in terms of representation in detective stories so there are a few more detectives out there who aren't just white or people that you might have seen in stories before. Um, there are several brown girl detectives so one of the things that I did early on was pair up Annabelle with people who have also written similar stories this year, such as Rupa Faruqi and Serena Patel. That means that they can all work together to cross promote their books and get it to as large an audience as they can. And it's been really great because it means that lots of people have stories to choose from that they might not have seen before. Other things I've been doing include uh, setting up Annabelle with interview opportunities so that she can be asked questions by journalists and they go into magazines like First News and Word magazine. She's done little profile pieces where she talks about what the inspiration was behind these books. Now, Agent Zyber is all about detectives, so some of the things that I've been doing has been involving making fun de detective activity sheets. Um, so you can do code breaking posters that can be put up in your classroom. And I've also made some pencils, so enthusiastic detectives have things that they can take their notes with. And these have been going to bookshops. Bookshops are another really great way to get the word out. And one of the things that we did with Annabelle is throw a little launch party at one of her favourite bookshops, which is Roundtable Books in Brixton. Roundtable specialises in diverse fiction for children. So it's been a really wonderful partnership and they've been helping to spread the word as well. So Annabelle has been brilliant because she's a very creative person. And that means that she makes her own videos as well. You might have seen one of her TikTok videos, which shows her making some uh, cupcakes for her second book in the series, The Poison Plot. That's been really exciting and funny, and I hope you get to see what kind of magic goes into behind the scenes and making really imaginative stories. So if you want to work in marketing and publicity, what kind of things do you need to do? You need to be good with people. So you need to be able to talk to lots of people about books that you enjoy. You need to be able to talk about books quite succinctly so you can give a good description and get people interested right away. And we call this an elevator pitch. And it tends to be one sentence that you can share. So for Agent Zyber, it'd be a brown girl detective solving crimes at a family Mendy party. So if this job is for you, what kind of things do you need to know? Well, you probably want to be somebody who really loves finding creative ways to tell all your friends that they absolutely must read your favorite book. If you like to find ways that you can say, hey, this one is one that I want to talk to you about, then this is probably the job for you. Um, and I think that's definitely the case with Agent Zyber Investigates. I really want as many people as possible to read this book because it's absolutely fantastic and you get to be in the scene solving crimes with Zyber and her friends. And so we have our book. Publishing is a passionate and creative industry with a whole range of roles to suit different skills and interests. I hope this overview has given you a useful insight into the different opportunities involved with making books and maybe inspired some future publishers and even authors. Enjoy the rest of the events.